Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill and welcome to another video on the Astro Vagabond channel. But first, I received my rotator for my Red Cat 51 Gen 2. If you have an interest in rotators when it comes to refractors, uh, might want to hit the notification bell. I'll be doing some videos around this uh, rotator. It's the uh, Wanderer rotator and um, it was recommended by someone in the Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society who's also a member of my Facebook group called Astro Vagabond and Friends so I'm looking forward to getting that in place. Okay now into the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is part of a series uh, that I'm doing um, around sharing my images where I collect the data on a new moon trip. Being a traveler, I don't image from my backyard too many constraints, tall redwoods, two-story buildings, um, heavily light polluted, but that's not that significant in that sense. We can handle that. Many fine images are produced under skies uh, more polluted than the skies uh, where my backyard is. But so I travel and I try to plan my trips around either side of a new moon, uh, weather permitting. So this is the Cocoon Nebula. I captured this data in September 2023. Uh, the location, I was at the Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society dark site at Blue Canyon Airport up in the Sierras. If you're looking for a club, you might want to check them out. I'll put a link in the video description. And for me, this is an easy trip. Uh, let's bring this down a little bit. Um, all right. This is an easy trip, um, 173 miles. Normally, I'm traveling down into the Southern California desert, and that's more like 473 miles. The only challenge with the uh, Bortle 3 Plus dark site at Blue Canyon Airport is winter. And when there's snows, uh, when it snows, it's not accessible. Um, part of what I want to do in these videos, there'll be a series focused on my Celestron Edge HD8. And then there'll be another playlist focused on my Red Cat 51, where I'll kind of step through the technical details. Uh, how much data did I acquire? And over time, if you have an interest and you let me know through the comments, I'll share more information about how I was processing the images in uh, PixInsight. For this video and the next couple, it'll just be a high level to give you an overview. So again, at the time, the uh, Edge HD8 with a 0.7x reducer, so I'm operating around 14, 22 millimeter focal length, F7. I also have the Celestron off-axis guider. Uh, I have the ZWO ASI 174mm Mini that goes in the uh, OAG. I'm using uh, an EAF, a filter wheel, filters, and a camera all from ZWO. At the time my configuration was the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount and then I was using the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance with the B-Link U59 mini computer and the GLI Burl wireless router. And then I also have Starlink available when I do these trips. Again, I started, uh, I purchased the GLI Burl wireless router when I had my ASI Air Plus devices because their Wi-Fi capability as far as signal strength was a bit limited. So I created a local area network put the ASI airs in station mode and then I was able to remote into the GLI net burrow wireless router from inside my van at night which uh, made it very convenient. I use Starlink if I need to bring drivers or something down to my devices otherwise if there's good cellular service in the area I can create a hotspot on my phone and I can do the same thing. I don't necessarily need to have internet connectivity available all the time to my uh, imaging devices. Um, this is what my uh, setup at Blue Canyon Airport looked like at the time. Uh, very nice facility. 
Uh, it's basically the tarmac. Uh, there's a runway there. And the Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society has a permit from the U.S. Forest Service to use some of the area around the, uh, the tarmac. Uh, this was an image uh, sub-exposure that I took somewhere along the, the night. As you can see down here, I think there was a little bit of high clouds. And, um, you know, I am basically uh, use nighttime imaging and astronomy a.k.a. Nina, and, um, you know, I no longer use the ASI Air Plus. I was able to sell them. They're very popular. I got a good price for them uh, when I sold them, and so that all worked out good. Okay, so let's go into the Cocoon Nebula. Now, I take the time to fill out all the technical information when I post my images. Hopefully this is helpful to people that are looking to get an idea I know how I use AstroBin, and I'll put a link to my AstroBin in the video description. I like to go there, see what imagers are doing, how much integration time, what filters they may be using, and those type of things. It helps if I'm going to do a new target and I uh, have, you know, I haven't done it before. This helps kind of focus me on what I should be looking for as far as integration time, and then again. Uh, the Blue County Airport is a Bortle 3 Plus uh, dark site, so that's important to know as well. As you probably know by now, dark sc darker skies matter. So, you know, Bortle 1, one hour of data, you might need an hour 35 minutes if you're in Bortle 4, and you might need 18 hours if you're in Bortle 8 like I am. So. Uh, I think it's good to keep into perspective integration times when you're looking at somebody else's images. They may be imaging in a very heavily light polluted area, so they're going to need more time. They're going to need to capture more data where if it's someone imaging in a Bortle 1, they're probably going to need a lot less time uh, to produce uh, an image with good, uh, good detail. So uh, you'll find uh, the technical information here as well. Um, we, can, uh, we can go into this a little bit, but uh, how you, what screen you may be viewing my videos and my images on will determine what the ultimate image may look like to you. Uh, my desktop <coughs> uh, display is not the best but uh, I'm going with it for now. Uh, one thing I tried to do with this image was I used Dark Structures Enhancement script in PixInsight to darken some of these structures a little bit. Again, in, I'm still learning with PixInsight. Am I doing too much? Uh, I took an hour and 15 minutes training on the 14th of December with uh, Ron Breacher, uh, AstroDoc, and uh, it really helped pull all my islands of knowledge together. And now it's about, in a sense, where I'm confident in the workflow, it's about not overcooking my image. And what Ron says is, if you can see what he did, then it's probably too much. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep that in mind. Um, so let's just take a quick dip into PixInsight. Again, this is going to be high level. But effectively what I did is I worked the, RGP, the RGB image independent of the luminous image. And uh, so if we look at History Explorer here, oh, uh, that's the wrong one because it was this one here. Okay, no, it's not that one. Where is it? Come on, guys. Was it this one? Yeah, okay. So let's just go here real quickly. And uh, so again, uh, I removed the stars and then I kind of worked the image at a, you know, a certain point I removed the stars. So here's my workflow for, uh, for this image and we'll just expand it a little bit. But you can kind of see what I did here. Blur exterminator, noise, star exterminator, noise exterminator, and then uh, several other processes in PixInsight. Now, looking at this image, what I see, I don't see where I did the uh, background extraction, but I'm 
fairly certain I use Grexpert on this to remove the uh, uh, any uh, gradient that might have been uh, present in the image. I am still learning the sometimes I make a clone of an image and when I do that I lose some of the information of what I did previously to the image so uh, I gotta kind of cut that out I should just work the image and where I'm capturing everything but essentially um, I uh, worked each image independently and then at a point near the end I used pixel math to blend the uh, the luminous in with the uh, with the RGB. If you'd like to see more on Pix Insight in my future videos, um, uh, let me know and I can break out some smaller videos of how I did something in particular on an image that might be helpful to you. But I also want to promote, if you're not familiar with uh, Masters of Pix Insight, uh, Warren Keller um, and uh, Ron Breacher and another gentleman who named escapes me or if you're not familiar with the services of Astro Doc Ron Breacher uh, you might want to check them out if you want a little help with Pix Insight. All right so um, that's basically it uh, again uh, the Cocoon Nebula it was a fun project and what made this whole trip kind of fun is it was about an eight nine day trip seven nights imaging after uh, Blue Canyon, I headed down uh, 395 and I caught up with Patrick Kerrigan and Christian Ralph in Red Rock Canyon State Park. First time I've been there, uh, a great place to image. You want to check out Patrick Kerrigan's channel, Patrick's Astro and stuff. He has some good content. You'll probably find content around Red Rock Canyon State Park down towards Ridgecrest, California. So, all right, just a kind of quick overview. I'll be doing this for each of my images. Feel free to ask questions. Other than that, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up because likes are very important to the channel. With the January new moon coming up, I hope you're looking at some favorable weather. Otherwise, see you next time.